Hey buddies, Sunnut Sky here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, we are going to teach you guys about early game baubles, the mentality behind getting the most value out of your early game baubles, which baubles you should be going for, and a couple of additional tips and tricks to you know get the most out of them and so that you know what to look out for with regards to your early game baubles. Alrighty, so first things first, we're going to have a look at the craftable baubles, the ones that you guys can actually go out and craft. We have uh, at first the tool belt. Tool belt's really easy, it's just a little bit of leather and iron. Additionally, we've got, uh, and string, we've also got the light arrow quiver. Also, just a little bit of leather, iron, uh, string, and one arrow. Now, the, the these can be quite useful early on because the tool belt gives you additional uh, slots. So you can basically, if you're wearing the tool belt, you can put items into the tool belt making it so that you can have multiple items held within one slot and have that slot actually in your bauble slot as opposed to an inventory slot, which is really, really nice. You have a key bind that you can utilize to bring up a radial menu so that you can put items in and out of that tool belt. Um, you guys probably know all that already, the, the quiver. Uh, if you just crouch and right click, we'll activate ammo collection mode. So if there's any arrows on the floor and you pick up those arrows on the floor while the, while the quiver is equipped, it will uh, put the arrows into your quiver instead of in your inventory. And these quivers start with a base value of, um, of about four, four slots. Yeah, max capacity four stacks for the, for the lowest level one. So you can hold quite a lot of arrows in there. Now the beauty of these and, and the beauty of all the things that we're going to be talking about here in the early game is reforging. And this is the sort of core theme of early game baubles is you're wanting things that you can reforge so that you can then gain the benefits of the good quality. So as an example, tool belts and quivers are really nice because you can actually get a fair amount of leather early game. Now, if you actually end up with an abundance of leather and iron and string, you can craft several of these. You know, if you if you don't if you don't have your building level eight, you need building level eight for the reforging station, which is you know where you're going to get a lot of the value from these early game baubles, but if you're not quite even at building level eight yet, um, you can just craft yourself maybe three, four of these and see if you get lucky. This light arrow quiver was the first one I crafted and it came out with undying, which could be massive, massive for you. Imagine you're 30 minutes into your playthrough, you got yourself a little bit of leather and iron, craft yourself a quiver, you got undying, first 30 minutes, you've already got damage resistance, increased health and magic shielding. So that's really, really good. If you don't get lucky and you have gotten to the point where you are building level eight, you can honestly get a reforging station really early. You can then use leather to reforge these uh, and go for uh, either healthy or undying is what I would go for if you have an abundance of leather. The next two we're going to look at are ones that I don't use mm, all the time, but I have used to quite a bit of value sometimes. You have the emerald amulet and the emerald ring. These can be made and found. These can be made easily, but they can also be found quite frequently. So they usually use mostly gold and one emerald for each. And they can be reforged with emeralds. Now, a little bit of early game emeralds is quite easy to get in various different ways. So it actually wouldn't necessarily be, uh, you know, bad value to maybe make an emerald amulet and just reforge it a couple of times. Hopefully you get something useful in your first few reforges. Hopefully. So you don't burn too through, through too many emeralds. Now you can also make potion rings and potion rings don't require emeralds to make. So I don't, I, I've used the emerald amulet more than I've used the emerald ring in the past because potion rings is what I aim for quite quickly. Potion rings can be crafted with gold and lapis, rather just a base potion ring, which has no effects uh, by default, but you can reforge these with gold, which is obviously really cheap. It's quite easy to get a lot of gold. Um, and so these are very nice and easy to reforge. There we go, healthy. So again, very early game. I could have an extra couple of heart or an extra heart there. Guys, one heart is two health. So when it says two max health, it means plus one heart. Just bear that in mind. Slightly more advanced uh, from the potion ring, you've got the potion ring of speed and the potion ring of strength. Now the potion ring of speed is made with sugar and redstone. Very easy to get. You know, just you can literally so easy to get. You can, you can get a redstone. Uh, from really easy early game mining, or you can just get blocks of redstone from some early game structures and sugar's just sugar. Potion ring of speed, really nice for an early game bauble and also reforged with gold. All of the potion rings are reforged with gold, so it's a really cheap reforge to get that extra quality as well. 
The Potion Ring of Strength is huge. Now, it's slightly later game and dependent on what you find, but you only need to get, what is it, eight? You only need to need to get eight Blaze Powder. Eight Blaze Powder. Um, you know, you can kill a couple Blazes in a dilapidated uh, or reverse Battle Tower. You can find a little bit in, say, a Battle Tower chest. You know, not it's not that difficult, not that difficult to get uh, some Blaze Powder. And this is a Potion Ring of Strength. The potion Ring of Strength adds three damage. If you have two, it'll add plus three each, so plus six. That's per strike. So actually, fast weapons are particularly good with this. So if you are early game and you get to the point where you can make Potion Rings of Strength, maybe go for weapons with speed instead of uh, high damage and low um, and low speed because the Potion Ring of Strength adds a flat amount of damage per strike. So this can be really good for early game as well. Also reforged with gold. Bezors, everyone knows a Bezor. I held it till a little bit later. Well, firstly, it's not a craftable one. And secondly, it's a little bit more expensive to reforge. A lot of these what next ones we're going to look at are. Um, so Bezors drop very frequently from poisonous spiders, cave spiders. You'll find a l bunch of these in your playthrough. Early, early game, check each Bezor. Check each Bezor. This one that I got was healthy, as an example. That's plus two hearts, literally for free, just dropping off of a spider. So really, really nice. You can also wear multiple Bezors. So if, an example, you are very early game, you're doing your first dun battle tower, you don't have many baubles equipped, you can literally wear two Bezors. If you have two Bezors with good qualities, wear them both. You'll get the benef benefits from both. There's no reason not to. Now, this is one which you're probably not really going to get early game um, too, too early. I mean, you can. If you know what you're doing, you can get this quite early. The only difficult thing with this really is a black heart. Scarlight is basically... A, uh, yeah, it's, ba it's basically one diamond. So this costs one diamond, a little bit of Umbrium, which is very plentiful in the in the uh, Defiled Lands. And the Black Heart's the only thing that's kind of difficult, but honestly, the mobs that drop these are so slow, it's really not that hard to get, and the drop rate is quite high. So the Scarlight Ring slowly restores health. It's basically like a slightly worse version of a Regeneration Ring, but if you do manage to pick this up quite early game, it's quite nice, and it is reforged with Umbrium. So again, really, really quite easy to reforge um for uh, for the early game stoofs moving on just slightly we're now moving on to the ones that you might find circumstantially you can't craft these and you're not going to be necessarily able to find them very easily oh you can make you can craft the cross necklace um okay interesting uh so oh you can, you can also craft the balloons see shows that i don't know what i'm talking about but you can't craft forbidden fruit you can't craft the broken heart you can't and you can craft sin pendant okay cool um Regardless, though, they do take a little bit of Spectral Silt, so you're probably not going to be crafting these. However, you can find these. You can find these in early game, like Battle Tower chests. You know, you'll definitely still be early game when you start to find some of these. And some of these can be really good. You know, immunity to hunger status effects and nausea increases the length of invincibility when damaged, increases jump height and negates some fall damage. The Broken Heart actually doesn't work. Lethal damage is supposed to destroy empty heart containers instead, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to work. It never really has in our all craft now the sin pendant on its own doesn't do anything um it can however be reforged to give you a quality this golden crown is where the sin pendant gets value so the golden crown can be found um it can also be crafted but the golden crown can be found quite commonly as well so it's very possible you'll find a sin pendant you'll find a crown in say a battle tower and then you can forge from that a pride pendant now the pride pendant is really nice gets you the sinful buff which is plus damage plus armor when you're at full health so as long as you maintain full health, maybe even you've managed to get a, an early game lifesteal weapon or an early game Scarlight Ring, or, you know, you just play safe with a shield and, a, say, a spear and keep yourself at range, don't take damage, you've got constant increase on your damage and your armor, which is really nice. Finally, last thing here is for these endgame baubles, uh, not endgame, sorry, for these sort of later early game baubles, you can reforge these with Spectral Silt. Now, Spectral Silt seems like it's expensive, but honestly, it doesn't have that many uses. It really doesn't have that many uses, um, apart from crafting some slightly meh baubles. I mean, honestly, the most value you'll get of, out of Spectral Silt might be crafting a few of the baubles that you haven't yet found to create your Ankh Charm. But I've, I don't think I've ever bothered crafting any of these. I've either looted them or, you know, I needed to craft them for the Ankh Charm specifically. Uh, either way... Spectral Silt actually isn't that hard to get. If you get a Disintegration Tablet, which is, you know, a little bit of Quartz, a little bit of Blaze Powder, 
Um, so which is why it's slightly later in the early game, but still very early game possible with these things dropping from overworld mobs um, or in chests. And you can use the disintegration tablet to create more spectral silt. So if you've got any baubles you're not using, or, and this is the value for these runes, these runes that I know a lot of people have asked about or wondered about, these runes are specifically cosmetic, they're cosmetic only, um, but they can, apart from the purple one, the purple one's used to craft like the, the ender talisman or something. Um, but these can be broken down with a disintegration tablet into spectral silt, as can flare ammunition and pretty much any other bauble as well. So getting spectral silt is actually not too difficult, and spectral silt is what's used to reforge any of these baubles. Pride pendant, sin pendant, broken heart, balloon, cross necklace, uh, forbidden fruit, more as well. Um, so they can all be full reforged with spectral silt, which isn't too expensive uh, if you consider you can disintegrate things that are completely useless to get it. So this kind of covers the very early game. You can literally get these tool belts and potion rings very early within your first, you know, the tool belts and arrow quivers you could easily get within 10, 15 minutes, you know? Uh, and if you get lucky, you could literally get a quality undying in 10, 15 minutes. Um, you know, the, the emerald and amulets and potion rings, you're gonna be getting slightly later, but still can get very, very early. Speed, potion ring of speed should be one of the first bubbles you really aim for, it's so cheap. Um, and it's really decent for what it is. Um, and then these ones are kind of going to be circumstantial if you end up getting a Sin Pendant and Golden Crown, which you, I got within the first few hours. Uh, so that that's quite nice. So yeah, there's hopefully some knowledge that you guys have gained there that's going to be helpful for you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. I go live on my Twitch channel pretty much every day except Monday and Friday. That's twitch.tv forward slash some nuts guy be great to see some of you guys there. I also run an SMP RL Craft 2.9 server. You'd be welcome to join. You got to earn 3,000 channel points on the Twitch stream. We run the server from the stream. You got to earn 3,000 channel points, redeem the whitelist channel point redemption thingy, and then you'll be able to join us. Alrighty, guys. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.